Hey everyone, welcome back to another film session where today we're going to be breaking down Kenny Pickett and the passing game from this past victory over the Packers. The Steelers winning 23 to 19. A close game. Another one went down to the wire. Let's break it down. Let's look into what Kenny Pickett did good, what he did wrong, and where, where he can improve. So on the first play we're going to be looking at is on the first drive. And what you have is you have the defense playing in zone. Uh, the route combination that the receivers are going to be running are are going up and out towards the sideline in different levels. And what ends up making this play is going to be reading the cornerback number 35 and watching his eyes. So right here, Kenny Pickett's looking directly at that cornerback. That's who he is reading. The cornerback is looking back at Kenny Pickett, so that tells you that's in zone. So this cornerback's going to have two options. He's either going to take the top route or he's going to come back towards George Pickens. Based on the, his positioning and where he's looking at, the throw should go to George Pickens, which it does. First down. Now, this play is not one that's good for, for Kenny Pickett. This is going to be the play that was uh, almost intercepted. It's going to be a play-action pass. And when Kenny Pickett rolls out, you have this is third down, by the way. So you have Darnell Washington open, heading towards the sideline, closer to Kenny Pickett than anyone else. Kenny just kind of leads him a little bit. That's a first down. But instead, Kenny's looking at Deontay Johnson, who's covered by three individuals. And to top it all off, the throw is horrible. You'll see it from the other side. So if Kenny Pickett makes the throw, I mean, it's probably going to be a first down if Deontay Johnson can keep his feet in bounce. But as you can see, the throw is just way behind. I just think there was a better option underneath to Darnell Washington. So on this play here, this is a, an example of what was happening throughout the day as well for Kenny Pickett. He just continually was eyeing down his receivers, never looked off. Uh, it was very rare that he went through uh, multiple progressions. It's typically the first read, and if it's there, Kenny Pickett is solid. But if it's not, he struggles with moving on and getting on to his second, third progression within a timely manner. So this is a play that ended up being thrown to Deontay Johnson over the top. Uh, this was one that there was a holding penalty on the defense for colliding with Allen Robinson, uh, the route in green. Kenny Pickett's going to throw the route up to the top in yellow. And there's really not anything there, assuming that if maybe perhaps Allen Robinson doesn't get knocked to the ground here, uh, the way the play is designed, he's probably going to come open. And even if he does, Kenny's never going to see him. Just continually looking in the same place. As you can see, Allen Robinson, had he gone open, there's a big open area uh, for him. And, and like you can see, everywhere else, it, it's pretty much covered. But if Allen Robinson doesn't get held here, I think that's probably the only open receiver that should come available. Ends up being a penalty, you know, do over for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They get a first down. I just question the decision and or the, the fact that he's just looking down one receiver. And just from the other view, just never looks off. Just never goes through his progressions. So on this play here, we're going to take another look at another example of Kenny Pickett staring down a receiver, not going through his progressions, and not finding an open receiver. First and foremost, we see the linebacker trailing. And Connor Hayward kind of tells you that at least it's a good chance that it could be man. If it is, you have a single safety over the top, and these are the matchups that you have here. Now, I understand why Kenny Pickett throws the ball where he does. I believe this was also on third down, and he ends up throwing it to Connor Hayward here in, in green. The routers are going to have a streak going up to clear out the outside cornerback and the over-the-top safety. This linebacker is not in great position to cover Connor Hayward. I don't think this is the right route for what the better route would have been more of a like a flat out to the outside, not necessarily an up and out, because that up and out, what it does is that allows this linebacker to get back in position. 
Now, what you have on top is something that I think is probably a more advantageous possibility for a good play to happen. You're going to have at the top of the screen, which is Deontay Johnson. He's a very good route runner. He's going to run up. He's going to make it appear like he's just running a, a go route. Then he's going to come back in uh, across right there around the 40, and he's going to be wide open. And the reason he's going to be wide open is this wide receiver here is going to hold his defensive back there, leaving that space open as well. And the middle linebacker is going to be held in his space there by the running back, Najee Harris, his route there. So the middle of the field is wide open. Right here, Kenny Pickett obviously knows that Connor Hayward is going to cut outward towards the sideline. And you see that this linebacker here is already in position. He then moves to his progression at the Boykin, who's running a go route, and he's double covered. And then Pickett's going to flee. However, if you look up at the top of the screen, you have side open areas. And here was here's what I'm talking about. You have Connor Hayward coming towards the sideline. He's number one. Number two is going to be Boykin running a go. And everybody's in position already. He's still looking in that direction. Have three defenders on the bottom half of the field guarding two possible pass catchers. And then at the top of the field, you have three defenders on three receiving options. Can't say which way or what direction that this play was designed to go to. I think Kenny Pickett was reading the middle linebacker and chose this route because of the positioning of that middle linebacker. But here's the thing. Kenny Pickett has a tendency of throwing these out routes like this whenever the defender is shading inside. When the ball was snapped, he started to move. That way he wasn't shading inside. He was more heads up. You got to be able to be better than the tape. If you keep putting down on tape that if you know your defender is going to shade inside, you're automatically going to throw to the outside. Uh, expect some traps. Kenny Pickett just rushes. He ends up getting some yards, but this could have been a big play. As you can see, he just never looks off until he's in trouble. Well, let's go back a little bit real quick. At the top of the screen, you're going to see Deontay Johnson come wide open right there around the 45. And there's nobody there. He does do a good job getting out of trouble. I will say that. His, his legs got him out of trouble a couple of times. This is a great play by Kenny Pickett. He sees that it's zone. You see the cornerback looking in. It's an out route. Like I said, this is basically one of Kenny Pickett's favorite plays. He's going to put it on the sideline for Deontay Johnson. This is another example. Let me rewind this so we can see it full, full play. Um, but this is an example of when the read is right, the first read is right, and the throw is made accurately and on time. If the first read ain't there, it's going to be a struggle. And here you see another example of him just kind of staring down the receiver, not looking at anybody else, making the throw. He gets kind of, I mean, I'm not saying he gets lucky or anything like that, but you know, the ball does pass by a defender fairly close. So he just stares down the receiver, one option, one throw. You know, I, I will say that he does give George Pickens more of an opportunity to make a play you know, than any other receiver. If the receivers aren't college open, he's typically not throwing to them unless it's a back shoulder pass and or college open receiver. If it's that, it's not happening unless it's George Pickens. And one of the things that Kenny Pickett, in my opinion, has had problems throughout, not just this year, but last year, is hitting the whole shot when the safeties are playing cover two. Cover two means basically that the at the top safeties split the field in half. One one safety ha is in charge of one side of the field and the other safety is in charge of the other side. And typically what will happen is you'll get an opening between the cornerback and, and the safety. It's a it's called a, a hole shot. This is the route that Deontay Johnson is running. And this is going to be the open area. 
Meeting off the bat, you can tell it's zone number 37 is watching the quarterback, not watching the receiver. Look at how far back the, the safety has gotten. Doesn't get it. Kind of just becomes a little bit of a check down, Charlie, to me. And here's an example of another issue that I've seen quite a bit, and that is with Pickett's field of view, his vision. It's not very big. It's a very narrow field of view. There's been multiple occasions where I've seen in multiple games where a receiver will come wide open, and it appears that he's in his vision of view. However, he just doesn't make the throw and or doesn't see the guy which tells me that he's just, he's narrowing down. The, the game is way too fast for him and he's just not seeing the field very well. On this play here, you're gonna have Connor Hayward come wide open. They could just don't see him. He ends up doing a check down to Najee Harris on the opposite side of the field. Rewind that a little bit. So he's looking at the top of the screen. You have Deontay Johnson, who's covered. You have George Pickens at the 25, who's about to cut out, you know, from the middle of the field towards the sideline. He's double covered. You have the underneath route. I believe that's Allen Robinson, who's going to be running across the field, who is going to occupy the middle linebacker, which is going to leave, which is going to leave Connor Hayward wide open in front of Kenny's view. And it just... He misses him. You don't see it. This has happened a few times. And here's that over two hole shot. Now, when it, when it's successful, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it's, it's been when there's been a back shoulder pass. I've not seen Kenny Pickett accurately hit the corner shot leading the receiver towards the sideline or in front of the receiver. It's the, the passes that he's completed on these have been to a back shoulder, as such is the case in this play here. However, if you're even, you're leaving. Look at where the safety is. He's not in position. This should go ahead of George Pickens. Instead, it's a uh, back shoulder pass. Still, still completion, still a first down. Won't, won't complain about that. Just kind of question the decision of the throw. You know, a better cornerback probably gets that interception. Yeah, the thing is, too, the Green Bay Packers were without three of their starting defensive backs. And yet Kenny Pickett can't look more than average against this team. All right, on this play here, this is a play that is one, it's third down. And it appears that you have single safety over the top. You have Deontay Johnson, your best wide receiver at the top of the screen against a secondary that's depleted. This should be the read. This should be the throw. What Kenny Pickett is reading, and it's not a terrible read. It's not a terrible decision. There's just a better one at the top. What is terrible is where he placed the ball when he threw it and how long it took him to throw the ball. Look at this from a couple of, we'll look at this a couple of times. So the first things first, if, if Kenny Pickett is reading this middle linebacker here, he's looking at, at the line. His vision isn't up the field, right? So he sees the middle linebacker have to loop around to get to Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren is running into the flat. It's not a bad decision. However, this should be maybe a one, maybe two step back and then throw. Instead, Kenny takes like three steps, maybe even four. Plants his feet. And Kenny just has this slow, long release. Kenny's decided to throw right there. The middle linebacker is on the 25-yard line, probably about two to three yards behind Jalen Warren and maybe three to four yards up the field from Jalen Warren. And while, and how long it takes Kenny Pickett to throw the ball out there, he's made up so much space, and the ball was just inaccurate. It should have been out more towards the sideline, not towards Jalen Warren's back shoulder. Bad placement, 
bad timing. And to add insult to injury, you have Deontay Johnson running wide open towards the end zone. This is third down again. Remember, third down. Steelers had to go for a field goal here. Here's that dreaded cover two hole shot again. You have what appears to be man coverage at the bottom on George Pickens. You have a single safety over the top here. I think it's going to end up turning into cover two, though. Even you're leaving, this ball needs to be thrown in front of George Pickens. Look at where the safety is. The safety is not in the greatest position if Kenny Pickett makes that throw. And it's just a bad throw. Look at where it lands. When it comes to the cover two shot, it just doesn't happen for Kenny Pickett. And the reason being is, one, you got to be able to read the field quickly. You have to be able to determine that that's the throw you have. You have to anticipate that throw and anticipate where your receiver is going to be there. And for all those things, Kenny Pickett just struggles with. And those are things that a NFL quarterback needs to be able to do. I don't like you know, piling on on Pickett or any of those things. But at the same time, there's just so many mistakes, so many misreads, misthrows. It's just at a certain point, I mean, there's nothing that we can do now, right? He's going to be the quarterback for the remainder of the year. question really should start to, to creep up is, is he the answer after this year? And should the Pittsburgh Steelers wait another year to determine if this is just him progressing and that there's still some more upside? Or this is just who he is. Remember, coming out of college, he wasn't a guy that everybody said was going to have a high ceiling. They say he's going to have a high floor, but that his floor was going to be pretty close to a ceiling. And thus far, that's been very, very accurate. Here's another issue with cover two. It's open. Kenny's looking at it. Throw the ball. Doesn't trust his arm. Doesn't trust his eyes. And this is the final play of the game. This is the cross route. Now, I want you guys to pay attention on this. That cornerback that is trailing George Pickens, he throws himself at Calvin Austin. He knows he's beat. Purposefully puts himself in position to get hit by Calvin Austin so that uh, the penalty is thrown for pass interference. Look at his trajectory. Look at where he ran into. He was not going to that part of the field. Watch me rewind that one more time. Just watch where he's heading. He's heading up, and now he heads back down. Mm -mm. That's bull crap. You'll see it from the other angle how badly he was beaten before this happened. And it just sucks that the referee that threw that flag was coming from across the field, and the guy that was behind them didn't. That wasn't a flag for them. Yeah, he ran into him on purpose. You know, good play by the defensive back. It was, it was able to stop the Steelers and it was able to give the Green Bay Packers another opportunity to go down the field and almost win the game. Fortunately for the Pittsburgh Steelers, defensive backs came clutch twice, making two interceptions in the end zone. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this one. You know, when it comes to Kenny Pickett for me, I see a lot of up and down in his game, but his upside is about average and his downside is definitely below average. His consistent play is below average, in my opinion, at this point. The stats don't lie. I'll be honest with you guys. I think if the Pittsburgh Steelers had a top 15 quarterback on their team, this team would be very dangerous and maybe even a contender for the AFC. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Hit that like and subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. I appreciate everybody that's tuning in. See you next time.